subscribe and share. Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and I'm the founder and owner of Tech Views and Open today. We're gonna to get into how hackers are able to hack into a newer model car and actually unlock the doors and possibly even drive off with the car without you really knowing what happened. So I want to be perfectly clear about this. This problem probably will be fixed uh, maybe next year, maybe even sooner than that, hopefully sooner than that. But it's 2015, mid-2015 mid right now. And um, if this problem isn't fixed, then maybe there will be some law to fix it. But anyways, as far as this goes, this problem will not really affect anyone who has to take a physical key like myself and unlock the door using the key itself. This problem really will only take effect to anyone who has a key fob who just has to be near the door to unlock it. If you gotta press a unlock button on the actual key thing, then it won't really apply to you either. There is ways to hack that particular thing, but it's much, much, much more harder and the, uh, you gotta really have a really good timing for that one. But for the other I'm talking about where you just got to be near the car and it'll unlock itself because of the key fob, that is very vulnerable, unfortunately. So, let's get into that real quick. How is this done? And uh, one thing to keep in mind, by the way, is most of those type of cars, they have a single uh, button where you can actually push it and it will start the car and take off of it and it won't shut off for safety reasons. So if the person takes it to a chop shop or something, you ain't seen that thing again. So, interesting item. And there's many others like it. it. Just because you see this particular one or see something else, it doesn't mean it's not this. But basically this item, it's basically a amplifier. What the item does, long story short, is it amplifies the signal to create a uh, the computer in the car to think that the key fob is right next to it within range because the key fob doesn't really and also the car itself doesn't really release the um, signal that far so it's a very very weak signal and that was the car manufacturers thinking of uh, security they didn't really think about the real world unfortunately and unfortunately we got these type of scenarios so what what's what people were in a, able to do is they were able to use the amplifier because there's a continuous it continuously puts out this signal and uh, and I'm pretty sure some of them you can actually shut off I unfortunately never had my hands personally on any of that type of stuff because and I'm pretty sure many of you have either but uh, basically it continuously puts off the signal it uses that continuous signal to actually trick the system into thinking the key fob is nearby the person's able to actually get into the car because now the car is unlocked do whatever they need to do or want to do not need to do and because the car thinks the key is nearby they can even push the button to turn on the car drive off and again the car won't turn off because of safety reasons it'll, it'll notice the car the key's not there or at least it'll notice something's up so maybe alert system will go off but for the most part the person can take it to a chop shop and that's that so with that one in mind how do you stop this amplification device now obviously you're not going to stop the person who uses it because they can literally take five ten bucks there's reports up to seventeen dollars but um, i can guarantee you i can get it down to five bucks and um and in fact if i'm making it myself i can get lower than that probably about two three bucks but um as far as that goes 
the actual thing, um, how you stop it is by actually blocking the signal from the key fob itself. I will leave a link below to some potential good places to get um, some bags to protect yourself. I've never tested this out myself. I don't have the money to get a car like that. So I, and I don't know anyone who does have a car like that personally. So I can't test it out myself. But I've seen this happen with other RFID things. Uh, many work places they'll have something like this, especially uh, government work. They'll have some, and military starting to pick up on this. Uh, United States military starting to pick up on this. Um, people who's traveling the RFID tag on passports, um, they'll use a similar technology. The uh, people who's using credit cards and stuff, you'll really see it right there. That's, that's actually a big one. People who's actually paying attention to uh, security threats. And what it is, is it's a bag or a wallet, and it's flexible, that basically has crisscrossed metal into it, or like almost like a chain mail. And radio signals have a tough time going through this, and in many cases, if it's a bag, it can't go through it at all. Um, wallets and stuff like that, there's a little bit of a chance, but it's very slim like almost like 0 .0001 type of sun but with that one in mind I will leave a link below on some things you can buy to protect yourself until the manufacturers come out and fix this I doubt they will go and do a recall but um, on the future versions I'm pretty sure they're gonna have something in place to fix this issue but anyways, this has been Craig Bent, founder of Honor Tech V Snoop, and hopefully this has helped you out. If you like this, please leave a like, subscribe, share. If you don't, then go ahead and leave a dislike and tell me why. But um, please feel free to check out the other videos, and also follow us on Twitter so you know when we release our next videos. Again, this has been Craig Bent, founder of Honor Tech V Snoop, and I hope you have a great day.